Chick Hatching Program from the Burlington Science Center with Miss Pavlicek. Hey students, Miss Pavlicek here. I'm very excited for Chick Hatching Month here at Burlington Public Schools. All the kindergartners will be able to observe real live chicks hatching from eggs. Today we're going to be learning about some different things. We're going to start off talking a little bit about eggs, different sized eggs, different colored eggs, and what's on the inside of an egg and why is it important for chicks. Then we're going to talk a little bit about chickens. What's the difference between a boy chicken, a girl chicken, and the eggs that you get at the supermarket versus the eggs that you have here for the chick hatching program. You'll also be introduced to the machine that the eggs are in, and you'll even get to meet one of my chickens at my house and see their coop or their home or where they live. All the chicks that hatch here at the Science Center will go back up to the farm, and I hope you enjoy seeing the videos over the next few weeks. Here we go. We're gonna start off with an age-old question. Which do you think came first, the chicken or the egg. So I'm going to ask an age old question. Which do you think came first, the chicken or the egg? What do you think? How many of you think the chicken came first? How many of you think the egg came first? Well, this is a very interesting question, and some of you students might recognize this from when I do um, have done a show about chick hatching in the past. Now, I can't really tell you the answer. I wasn't around hundreds of thousands or even millions of years ago when the first chicken was around or the first egg. And scientists, that's what they do. They observe and they learn, and they like to tell you their opinion or their conclusion or their ideas about what they think. So I don't mind if you think the chicken or the egg, I consider it right. I like to tell students, I think the egg comes first before the chicken because breakfast comes before dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Funny joke. But with all seriousness for today, we are going to start off with the egg. Eggs. So get ready, boys and girls. Hold on to your seats. Can I get a drum roll, please? Drum roll. I would like to introduce to you the one, the only, the amazing chicken egg. Ta da! Round of applause, round of applause. Woo! You must be like, Miss P, you're a little silly but I really do think the egg is an amazing thing. It's one of the most amazing things I think that is produced in nature. In fact, there's a really neat investigation you can do with eggs that I'm gonna do right now. Now you can do this on your own time. Please don't do it right now because we wanna learn about the rest of the stuff I have here today. But I would like you to take an ordinary chicken egg from the fridge and I would like you to take your hands and clamp your fingers together upside down like this. And then I'd like you to take the egg sideways with the edges like this and put it in your palm, clamp your fingers, and on the count of three, I want you or maybe have your mom or dad or sibling or somebody squeeze as hard as you can. And I'm gonna practice this right now. Are you guys ready? All right, let's count to three. And three, two, one. Oh. Wow, jeez, I'm tired. What do you notice? What do you observe? Eggs are typically really easy to break, but I just put it in my arm and let me tell you, I am a strong woman, but I couldn't break the egg. Hmm, what do you think's going on here? Just take a little while to think. What do you think's happening here? Any ideas? Do you think I'm just not strong enough? I'm strong enough. Do you think maybe this is a fake egg? Nope, it's a real egg. Well, boys and girls, it has a little bit to do with the shape of the egg 
And then it also has a little bit to do with what's covering the egg. What part of the egg covers the outside? That's right, it's the shell. And the egg and the shell is one of the most amazing things produced in nature. Let me tell you why. It's because it's made of a special material or substance. What I need you to do is take a guess. What do you think makes an eggshell so hard? What is that substance? What is it? Any ideas? Hmm. Give you a hint. It's what makes your bones strong. It's why we drink milk, because it has a lot of this substance in it. It's called calcium. Can you say that? Calcium. Calcium makes things really, really strong. And it's what makes eggshells so strong. So this is really neat. You can try this later at home. Now, I have to tell you, if you happen to pick an egg that has a little crack in it or is broken, it might explode all over the place. But it's a really neat to thing see, to see how amazing an egg can really be. So go ahead and try that. Well, <coughs> now we're going to move on. Now that we've learned how amazing the chicken egg can be and how birds lay eggs, do you think that chicken eggs are the only type of eggs there are in the world? Or birds? Of course not, Miss P. There's tons of different birds. So we're going to look at some different sized eggs, which I think different size eggs. Eggs, which I think are really neat. Now the first egg I'm gonna show you is the smallest egg in the world. Any guesses? Think of those birds. What's a really, 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 really small bird? All right, the smallest bird is called the hummingbird. Maybe you guys have some feeders at home. But, are you ready to see how small the egg is? Here it is. I don't know if you can see that in my fingers. Whoa, it's tiny. It's just like a Tic Tac. In fact, I asked myself, why did I spend $12 on this hummingbird model when I could have just used a Tic Tac? Oh, well, but that's pretty neat. Tiny, can you imagine a baby bird hatching from this? Whoa, all right. The next bird is the star of our show. Who's the star of our show? The chicken, correct? And we already saw how big the chicken egg is. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with that. The next egg I'm gonna show you comes from a little bit of a larger bird. You can see it sitting in my hand. Any guesses what bird made this egg? Any ideas? It's bigger than a chicken. All right, I'm glad you got your guesses. This comes from a goose. All right, pretty cool. So a little bit of a bigger egg than a chicken. Honktastic, awesome. And the next egg goes to the biggest living bird today. Hmm. Any guesses? All right, it is indeed the Ostrich egg. Are you ready to see the biggest egg laid from the biggest bird alive today? Oh boy. Here we go. The ostrich egg. Whoa. Sun's coming out, shining on our egg. You can see I've even poked a hole in the bottom to get the inside out. So that's a pretty big egg. But boys and girls, it's not the largest egg that was ever laid in the history of the world. In fact, there are some animals that no longer exist in our world because they've died out for one reason or another. What's that word, that vocabulary word, when animals are no longer around? That's right, they are extinct. This is an extinct bird that was 12 feet tall, lived on an island in Madagascar in Africa, and it laid the largest eggs in the history of the world. And how do we know that, you ask? Well, scientists, what do you think? How do scientists know how big a bird egg is if there are none of them around? <gasps> hmm. Oh, they find things called fossils. They dig in the ground, things harden, and they find them and measure them. So I don't have a real fossilized bird egg from 
the extinct bird because it would be worth a million dollars. It would be in a museum and I wouldn't be teaching. I'd be out in the rainforest somewhere in my new house. But we do have a model. So boys and girls, the name of the extinct bird was called the elephant bird. Elephant, big. And here is how big it was. Are you ready to see it? Another drum roll, please. Here we have the largest egg laid in the history of the world. Woo wait, that is huge. Now again, this is just a model, but it's pretty interesting to think how large this egg was. Might get you thinking, I wonder what the closest relatives to chickens are. What are chickens closely related to? Maybe we'll talk about that in a little bit. Inside of eggs. A little bit. All right, so enough about eggs on the outside. We're gonna talk about eggs on the inside. And here we have, once again, the star of our show, the chicken egg. Now this board here has lots of different parts. And we talked a little bit last week how all of those parts have different function. We've got parts and function. Parts are the pieces and function are the jobs that they do. So we're gonna talk very quickly about all the parts of an egg. Cause if you've ever cracked an egg open, my mother was just asking me about this last week. Now for some eggs, if there is a baby inside, there's this little tiny dot here. We call that dot an embryo. And the embryo is the baby chick right before it starts to grow. But the part that we're familiar with is this yellow part, which is called the yolk. And the yolk is an important part of nutrients and food for us. And it's also the food for the baby chicken while it's growing inside. Now the next part of the egg, as my signs blow away here, is purple in this picture, but it's really clear when we see it. It's called the egg white, and that's because when you cook it, it is white. And this is where the baby chick gets their water from. We also get nutrients from it. And it also keeps out things like germs and bacteria when that baby is um, growing inside the egg. The next part is my favorite are these little white strings. And you can see these if you crack an egg open. So try it later on. You'll see these little white kind of ropey strings. These are called chalaza. Can you guys say that? Chalaza. I always thought it'd be a great girl rock band name. Chalaza, woo, yeah, rocking with the chickens. All right. Now, these chalaza, if you look at them and you think of their function, what do you think they do? They kind of look like ropes. That's right, what they do is they support the yolk and the baby inside the middle of the egg. And we'll learn about why, because the mother chicken will often roll her eggs and turn them. Now this pink part here is not really pink in an egg. I'm gonna pull open my cracked open egg here. Um, it's an older egg, it's a little gooey. What you're gonna see is when you crack an egg open, right on the inside of the shell is this kind of white flimsy piece. It kind of peels and kind of looks like skin. Oh, it's hard for me to get a piece of it. There it is. Yeah, this kind of white flimsy part. That, boys and girls, is called the shell membrane. And what that does is it prevents the chick when it's growing to getting stuck on the outside of the egg. And then, of course, we have the outside, the black part, which is called our shell. What's the shell made out of again? That's right, calcium, and the shell protects everything that's inside. And the last part you're gonna notice is like a little bubble here, and that's because when the baby chick is growing inside, they need an air cell. And what that does is it makes them take that first breath of air with those lungs we just learned about before it hatches and comes out into the real world. Now, so now that we've learned about the eggs on the inside, I'm gonna consider you guys experts. Uh, Girl versus boy chickens and hatching. And now that you guys are considered experts, I have another question for you. How do we get eggs? I mean, as far as chickens are concerned, 
Which chicken gives us the eggs? That's right, it's the girl chicken. And the name for a girl chicken is called the hen. And in fact, inside the hen's body, she has special parts that make that egg. Yeah, she's got all the same parts we do, lungs, a throat. She's got a special tube where the eggs are made and she lays them out of her backside. But there's a question I have about the eggs that we have here in our house. How come the eggs that we get in the supermarket do not have babies inside of them? Hmm. Any ideas or thoughts? Some people might say, oh, oh, Miss P, it's because they're cold and eggs are typically kept warm. Well, doesn't have to do with the warmth, boys and girls. It has to do with the other type of chicken. If the girl chicken is called the hen, what do we call the boy chicken? That's right. Oh, 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 oh! We call him the rooster. Now, the eggs that we get in the supermarket, boys and girls, those come from a farm where there are only hens. Just hens laying their eggs. It takes one day for a hen to lay her egg. Now, the eggs that we get for chick hatching are a little bit different. They have that small spot that called that embryo, which is the baby chick. And in order to get a baby, we need the girl or the hen, but we also need the boy or the rooster. And the rooster mates with the hen and makes that egg a special word that we call fertilized. Can you say that? Yeah, fertilized. So the chick hatching eggs like this one are fertilized eggs. And the eggs that we have in the supermarket only come from farms where there are just hens. Now, hens do a lot of work with their eggs in order for them to grow and be bigger, strong. So let's see what it's like to be the life of a hen. Do I have any hens out there? Hens, hens! Hens and caring for the eggs. She's getting ready to lay her eggs. But unfortunately, we can't let Bridget Hen just lay her eggs here on the floor or on this chair. We need somewhere to lay her eggs. Where would we have a hen lay her eggs? That's right, a nest. I'll be right back. Awesome. Here we have a nest box full of nice, comfy bedding for her to lay her eggs. Now, before she gets ready to lay her eggs, remember, it takes 24 hours or one day to lay her eggs. So go ahead out to the farm and go do what you need to do. She'll come back from the farm when she's ready. She's going to eat and drink and get ready for everything that she needs to, to do her important jobs as a hen. And she comes back after one day, we have egg number one. Oh, she lays the egg. Good job. All right, Mother Hen's going to go out. Look at that. She laid one egg. Now she's going to go. She's going to come back after day number two with egg number two. And she lays her second egg. Good job, Hen. We've got two eggs and she's going to go out to the farm again with day number three. What number egg do you think we have? That's right, egg number three. Good job. Now, Mother Hen, why don't you go out and grab the rest of your eggs really quickly? Now, I don't have time to go through all the days it takes to lay their eggs. We're gonna speed it up, and you can just stand here and count out your eggs for me. So we have three days, three eggs. We have day number four, egg number four. Day number five, egg number five. And number six, 
And number seven. What else we got in there? Number eight. Number nine. And last but not least, number 10. Good job, Mother Hen. Now, after she's laid about 10 eggs, we call that her clutch. It's the perfect amount for her to do her next job. What do you think her next job is? What does she have to do in order to have a baby grow inside? That's right, she needs to keep them warm by sitting on her eggs. So go ahead, Bridget Hen. She is going to sit on those eggs. Oh, good job in keeping her clutch warm. Now, if she only laid one or two eggs, a lot of those eggs wouldn't hatch. And a lot of the eggs you see won't hatch as well. But if she lays too many eggs, like a hundred, she can't fit on them with her bottom and her soft feathers to keep them warm. So instead she lays the 10 or around a clutch. Now the other thing the mother hen does besides sit on her eggs is she will turn them using her beak. And you can just use your hands, but she will turn her eggs and rotate them so both sides stay warm and the babies don't get stuck on one side of the egg or another. Now, mother hen sit back on those eggs because in order for her babies to grow and hatch, she doesn't just sit on them for one day. I wonder how many days she sits on her eggs. Do you know? She doesn't know. Here we're gonna count together. One, two days, three days, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, whew, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21 days this hen has to do all that work. Sit on her eggs, turn them, she has to feed and drink water for herself, and then her babies are ready to hatch. Awesome. Give my mother hen a round of applause. Good job. Incubators and Life Cycles. Now, boys and girls, I don't have a mother hen for all of your classrooms to sit and keep those eggs nice and warm, but you might have seen a video or two of me standing with a big machine. And that machine is going to help keep the eggs warm and it's where your eggs will hatch. That machine represents just like the mother hen would. And that machine is called an incubator. Now I have that big incubator, but when the eggs hatch, I move them into a smaller one so you can see them with a camera. And I'm gonna show you that incubator here so you can see what it looks like. Because once it's on, I can't move it. So the incubator has two parts. It has the bottom part, which is made of styrofoam, and that helps hold in heat very well. You might see cups and stuff when your parents are drinking warm um, drinks. The bottom also has this plastic tray that we fill with water, and that's for humidity. We need it to be moist so the chicks don't get dry and get stuck inside their eggs when they hatch. When the mother hen sits on the eggs, her feathers make those eggs nice and moist from the warmth and moisture of her body. Then we have this little grate that sits on the bottom, and the grate is what the chicks will have their first little gripping strength with. They'll wrap their little toes and claws on after they hatch. They will start doing little exercises and they will learn how to walk on their very own. But when they hatch, you're gonna notice they're wet, they're tired, and they cry a lot just like newborn human babies. But over 24 hours, they will get fluffy dry and they will learn to walk with the help of this grate. The grate also allows for the poop to fall through to the bottom so they're not stepping in it. Now the top of the incubator has a special machine called the thermostat and that thermostat helps raise and lower the temperature of your machine. Baby chickens hatch at 99 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very, very warm. And that warmth comes from the electricity in our building. 
and it goes through the wire and it heats up that thermostat and there's even a little fan to blow around the warm air. And this silver coil is what gets very hot and heats up the air inside the incubator. Now, how do we know how warm it is? Well, we're going to use a thermometer that you'll see inside the incubator at all times. And it's my job, I'm like the big mother hen, to take care of the machine and the babies. Now, after the chicks hatch and they start to grow, we are going to observe what's called the life cycle of the chicken. The word cycle is like a circle. And what you'll see is, we start off with the adult chicken. Then the adult chicken lays the egg. Then that egg hatches into a baby or a chick. And then that chick grows up through different stages and becomes an adult. It usually takes about six months for a chicken to become an adult. And one of the things you'll notice during the life cycle is they change a lot when they grow. They change in size, they change in shape, they change in color, and they even change what they do. They won't sleep as much when they're babies, and when they grow up, they'll be doing different things like foraging for food and insects at the farm. So I hope you enjoy watching that life cycle, and on to our next part. Meet the chicken. This is my chicken, Buffy. And Buffy is about three years old, which is relatively middle-aged for a chicken, or relatively young. Hi, I know. Most chickens only live to be five to 10 years old. And she is a type or species of chicken called a buff orpington. And they have this kind of buff color. And because she is buffed, and I ended up just naming her Buffy, uh, some of my chickens I name and some of them I don't. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at her body from head to tail. And we're going to talk a little bit about her parts and her function. So the first thing that I always talk about um, with parts and function is the part all the way on the top of the chicken. I'll get really close. Hopefully you guys can see this. It's a red patch of skin on top of her head. Does anyone know what those are called? All right, that is called, I'm gonna get my other signs here for our next segment. That is called Buffy's comb. And it's called her comb because it's just like when you comb your hair, it's up on top of your head. Now, I always say the comb is up top. And what do you guys think the function of that is? I don't know. You might notice it's hard to see because my shirt is red. Oh, easy, Buffy. I know, I know. She's not the, uh, she doesn't always like to be held. Oh, there we go. It's all about making how you hold them and making them comfortable. The comb is actually a way for chickens to recognize each other because their combs are very unique, kind of like our fingerprints or even our hair or the way we look. So you, chickens can tell each other apart from their combs. Also, if we have a boy chicken, what's the boy chicken called? Can any of you tell me? That's right. The boy chicken is called the rooster. Can I get a cockle doodle do? Come on, everybody, give me your best rooster cockle doodle do. Oh, 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 oh! Go ahead, do it, roosters. Awesome. All right. So the roosters will actually use theirs to be attractive to the female. The bigger and the prettier the rooster, the better they take, the bigger and prettier the comb, the bigger and prettier the rooster looks to the female. So they have to take really, really good care of their comb. Now the last function of the comb is very important. Think about this chicken in the summertime. All of these feathers make it really hot. Can you imagine having your body covered with layers and layers of feathers? That would be really warm. So this exposed skin actually helps Buffy to cool down in that warmer weather in the summer. It's a great function. Now, besides having the comb, the other part, my signs are blowing all over here. The other part hangs down below her chin. So we have the comb, and the next part is down here. See if I can get close. Can you see it? Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. So satisfying. Boop, boop, boop. 
Does anyone know what that is called? It's called her waddle. Go ahead, say that. Waddle. And the waddle serves those same function or purpose as the comb. It helps them cool down. It makes them look attractive. They can tell each other from it. So remember, comb, waddle. Go ahead, do it. Comb, waddle. Comb, waddle. Waddle, waddle, comb, comb, waddle, waddle, comb. Go, no, nope, comb. <laughs> anyway, but really neat part of the chicken. Now, when a chicken uses this skin to calm down or cool down, it's actually called thermoregulation because it's helping regulate that body temperature by cooling. Are you going to sleep, Buffy? That's really sweet. <laughs> um, but the next part I want to talk about is a little bit um, about her eyes. And I'm going to get really close with Buffy here. You can see her eyes. Chickens have fascinating eyes. They aren't huge compared to their head, but they have fairly good vision. They can see in the same colors or spectrum that we can, which is really neat. Um, they also have their eyes on the side of their head, which means they can see in front, in the side, and even around. It's like 360 degree vision. And the neatest thing is inside their head, in the head somewhere is a special gland. And a gland is another part that a chicken has. And inside that gland, they can sense light, even the faintest changes. So you might notice something's happening with the light right now this time of year. What do you notice is happening with the daylight? That's right, it's getting shorter, right? The sun is setting earlier. Gotta, the sun is it's getting darker earlier. And you might notice when I was touching Buffy, her feathers were falling out. Well, when that light sensing gland in their head senses that the light's getting shorter, it triggers her body to do something. It triggers her body to molt or shed. And once a year, chickens will lose their feathers, not at all at the same time. Then we'd have a naked chicken and that wouldn't be very, very nice. But Little by little, they lose their feathers. So you might have noticed when I was picking her up or the wind blew, her feathers were falling out, falling out. And you can see I just touch her and her feathers are falling out. So molting is an important part for chickens to get new feathers. It's kind of like, you know, you taking a bath and taking care of your skin and, you know, maybe some parents or moms getting facials. It's an important part of replenishing their feathers that might get broken or bruise or anything throughout the year. So that's a little bit about chicken's eyes. You can also tell a lot about how a chicken is feeling based off the eyes. If they're looking sleepy all the time, they could be sick, or um, if their eyes are bright and alert, then you know it's a healthy chicken. Isn't she sweet? I just think she's so pretty. I don't know if you can hear her, but she's talking. Can you talk? Uh. Yeah, she's talking. She's really, really sweet. All right, so the next part of her eyes that's really neat, I'm going to see if we can see it. Now, so, oh, did you notice when she's blinking? She does have eyelids. That's the one that comes down. But you have to see the other part. It happens really fast. Watch what happens. Let's see if I can get her to do it. It happens when she blinks. So this is a special eyelid. Oh, you can see it, it's white. Watch when she blinks, it happens really fast. That special white, not that eyelid, she's closing her eyes. That's not the one I'm talking about. The other one I'm talking about goes like this and it goes really fast when she blinks. Can you see it? That's called her, you ready for this one? Oh. Nictating membrane, can you guys say that? Nictitating membrane, nictitating membrane, nictitating membrane. The nictitating membrane is what protects her eye if she's in a fight with another bird or a predator comes around or if there's stuff blowing around like now with a storm that protects or covers the eye. Awesome. Well, the next part we're gonna talk about is her beak. And you're gonna see that her beak is very short. It is a little bit pointy, but it's not super sharp but they use their beak for lots of functions. The first thing they use their beak for is eating their food. 
Now, chickens eat a variety of food, but mainly you buy pellets from the store. It's made of different grains and nutrients and minerals and vitamins. You want some? No. And an important part of feeding your chickens is also having what's called oyster shell or grit. And I'll describe in a little bit what to do with this oyster shell and grit or what it does for them, but you mix it in with their food. They also love things like plants. I will let my chickens out to free range when I'm in the yard and they'll eat the grass and the leaves and sometimes my garden vegetables. Thank you. And then the other thing they love is insects. And these are some dry mealworms. Want some dry mealworms? No, it's because I'm holding her, but we'll put those in the coop later and let you guys watch her eat. And then another important thing for chickens is giving them a variety of fresh fruits and vegetables. My chickens love melon, blueberries, um, and lots of greens and any other type of fruit or vegetable that you might have. Chickens kind of will take any scraps, but you never want to give your chickens things like onions, potatoes, anything spicy. You want to stay away from that. Avocados. Those are generally things that animals can't have. Now, besides using her beak to eat, she will also use her beak to assert where she is in her pecking order. They use that word pecking order because chickens have a chicken that's on top and then a chicken that's on the bottom or the low totem pole and then all in between. And they use that beak to peck each other to kind of assert dominance and tell you who's the boss. Buffy's not the boss. My duck is the boss. I have a duck that lives with my chickens. You'll see her in a little bit. Um, but they do use that for the pecking order. The other thing she does use this for is to roll her eggs. You can see that if she was going to have babies, she would use that curved part of her beak to roll her eggs. And then the last thing she would do is clean herself. She would use her beak to pull her feathers through her beak and pull all the dirt off. Do you guys know that chickens love to take baths? in the dirt they're called dust or dirt bats and around the corner in my yard they dig out where the soil is and they roll around and they fluff it and what it does is it keeps them clean it gets the oils off it also helps them with things like parasites and bugs that want to live on the chicken and we'll talk about that a little later too now since chickens eat a variety of food they eat pellets plants and insects. Does anyone remember what we call an animal that eats both meat and plants? Now an animal that just eats meat is called a carnivore. An animal that only eats plants is called an herbivore. And an animal that eats both is called an omnivore. An omni meaning several or many omnivore are you an omnivore yes you are <laughs> awesome now some birds on the top of their beaks have a little tiny bulge of skin in these two little holes so there's one hole on this side and then one hole on the other side and those holes are buffy's nose or nostrils just like ours and she uses those to take in her air to breathe with her lungs but that top little part of her beak where the nostrils are on most birds is called their sear. So birds' noses at the top are called their sear and their noses and their beaks are kind of connected. So their mouth and their nose are kind of the same part connected together, but they do different functions or things. <coughs> Excuse me. Awesome. So the next part you're gonna notice is Buffy's lots and lots of feathers. Now, chickens have feathers on their neck that they can use to stand up when they're feeling angry or upset. Buffy has her wing feathers here. The longer feathers on her wing are called her primary feathers, and those are the ones used for flight. Now, chickens can't... I know, I'm sorry. Oh, let me put her down for a second. Are you going to show them your wings? Now, chickens can't fly up in the sky like a hawkwood or a songbird, but they can fly up about 10 to 20 feet on different perches and branches. So when you have chickens at home, you want to give them things to perch or sit on, and you'll see those in my coop. But those flight feathers are very important, especially if they need to get away from predators. Now, the rest of their feathers are on their body. Now, you'll also notice that she has a tail. And their tail is there 
see if I can demonstrate. She's not really doing it, but their tail feathers are there for balance. The tail is an important part of balancing. And then I'm sorry to show you her bum. It's a little private, but these feathers are very important. These are her soft down feathers that are underneath her other feathers or on her bottom. And that's what she uses if she was going to sit on her eggs and have a baby. So soft, fluffy bums for a chicken to lay their eggs. Awesome. Now, underneath her other feathers too, you can see she's molting. Um, she also has those soft down feathers that help keep her warm. So woo, those feathers keep her warm and they also make her attractive to the male as well. Um, chickens can be pretty heavy, um, weighing several, several pounds, eight, nine, 10, um, 12 pounds. And um, I'm sure you guys have bought chicken at the store before and you've had different weights or kinds of chickens. We're getting a little shower here, so that's pretty interesting. Now, the next part I wanna talk about is some of you might have chickens at home. When we look at the chicken's neck, where's my little model chicken here, put her back up. The chicken's neck, this is the chicken's esophagus. And right here at the base of the chicken's neck is this little pocket. And that pocket grows or gets bigger as the chicken eats its food. And that pocket is called the chicken's crop. Can you say that? crop. Now, people always say to me, Miss P, chickens don't have teeth, birds don't have teeth. So how do they chew or break up their food? I mean, if you look at this pellet, that's a pretty big pellet. How do they chew that? Well, they don't. They swallow it whole and that's where it sits. It sits in this little pocket called the crop. And as they eat, it gets bigger and bigger. And if you have chickens at home, you'll notice that at the end of the night, your chicken's neck is bulging and it's full here from their crop. Now this is where the oyster shell comes in or what we call grit. And what this does is chickens will naturally pick at stones and little rocks on the ground and it breaks up the food just like our teeth would break up our food, but it does so in that pocket called the crop. So it's pretty cool. It's almost like having a pocket for your jeans, but they have a pocket in their, their throat for their food to help break it up. And then from there, the food goes down into their stomach, which has a muscle and it's really called their gizzard. And some of the moms or parents might know this word from when they're making Thanksgiving turkey and they have to remove the gizzard and all the stomach parts because you don't want to eat what the turkey or the chicken was eating. So these parts get removed when we eat them for food ourselves. So the gizzard is where that food digests and breaks down and then it goes into their intestines. And then again, we get to the back part of the chicken, which is called her cloaca it is a hole and that is where she lays her eggs or she goes to the bathroom and i do have to say for any of you considering whoops, sorry buffy for any of you considering or wanting chickens at home that is one of the number one things you must consider birds poop a lot and they do have an odor and when they go to the bathroom their number one and number two comes out together in a ball it's a white and brown ball um, but they poop a lot during the day hey students i hope you enjoyed learning about chickens and eggs and about the chick hatching process and meeting one of my chickens if there's times your teacher may show you another video introducing my chicken coop at home and what it's like to take care of chickens. But if not, I'll be seeing you again in more videos and during chick hatching week. Take care. Bye.